is Becky and welcome back to the Self Care Tea Total channel. Um, so I know it's been probably nearly two weeks since my last um, upload and sorry about that um, but sometimes you've just got to listen to your head, your mind, your body and um, you know not put too much expectations on yourself because this is for me ultimately and for others that do listen so but like I haven't been in the right headspace, um, not sure why, um, probably a bit of overworking again because um, I've got some exciting stuff going on in my personal life um, which hopefully I'll share as the time goes on within this channel but with it's something some self-development um, but I'm one of those people unfortunately, I mean I know I've just given you a little bit of like uh, um, but I don't want to release anything more until I know it's really taken off the ground um something really exciting um which is like I said taking up quite a lot of my time and energy but I wanted to um jump on today just because um I think it's quite difficult sometimes to um so I just wanted to remember what this channel was about and, and being teetotal and um, and how I love, by the way, being teetotal. I literally wake up at the weekend and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? What's the day going to bring? Um, if I was now to start drinking again, I would probably be hungover for three days feeling absolute crap. Um, with that come anxiety, with that becomes uh, mental health problems enhanced. Um, everything I planned at the window, no gym, no nothing. So you can all relate with that. And that is one of the bonuses that I what I keep reminding myself of to keep myself going. And the, also the massive impact it has on my personal life, my work life. Um, for me, for me personally, to go back to drinking which i just want to also say you know i'm never saying never in my i'd love that to be never ever but nobody knows what the future holds but this is this is my accountability this this channel is my accountability to keep me on the straight and narrow too um but i just wanted to say you know it yes it gets a hard it, it it's hard at the beginning can't lie to you it is it's you know everything that you do every plan that happens is around um drinking like socially alcohol is a problem isn't it like um nobody plans anything really any <laughs> without alcohol but um i just need to remember that actually the relationships that i've built in the last year and a bit or ones that i have improved all been because I have not touched alcohol. Uh, I've touched on everything that's happened in my life that's bad. Uh, you know, I start from a young age. You know, I was um, I got into trouble with the police. Um, being drunk, drunk and disorderly. Um, started drinking at the age of thirteen. Um, you know, which probably seems like everybody does that, although I do think with times are changing and I think children, teenagers are becoming more, more self-aware. I hope that drinking isn't big and clever. Um, um, I get the feel of that. I don't know whether you guys agree. Um, um, you know, so just getting into a little bit of fights when I was younger or because I was drunk. Um, and I, I've touched on being Jekyll and Hyde. I look back when I was in my school life and, and that's where the problems really started, really. When I started drinking, drinking to the point where I didn't know who I was and people around me would probably think, who the hell is this? I'd be probably in your face. I'd probably want to fight you. I probably did fight a lot of you and you probably didn't want to. And, you know, things like that, are really disgusting when I look back at that. I'm absolutely ashamed of some of the behaviours that I basically ship. Who I was, who I was as a person really. So those behaviours were unacceptable. And if I had a child now, I have a stepdaughter, but if she was the same, like she, she's beautiful. All my brother's kids, you know, 
beautiful. But if any of them acted the way I did as a child, I'd be absolutely mortified. Um, I was brought up by my grandparents who were the most amazing people on this planet. Um, I was given up at birth by my biological mum, who I've already mentioned, she passed away from being an alcoholic um, in 2020. Um, so she gave me up at birth, um, me and my brother, and um, we were brought up by our grandparents, who I called mum and dad, because I knew nothing more than that. Um, and my they didn't drink, which is quite surprising, because you think, well, where, like, if it wasn't, if your parents weren't drinking, where did you get it from? But my whole family are drinkers. Um, there's quite a lot of alcoholics in our family, and your biological mum's one. Um, so obviously i personally believe and i believe still to this day that i think like i was born with my mum drinking in as i was in her tummy so um you know i probably i feel like i probably come out of her womb wanting alcohol i know that's not actually true but you know what development issues did she cause me you know have the way that i am with alcohol I, I just feel that it's, you know, my biological father's an alcoholic right now. <laughs> um, I, I'm forever thankful for being brought up by my mum and dad, grandparents. Sorry, I get confusing. I've got, a, my life is like EastEnders, absolute like EastEnders, the amount of things that have happened. <laughs> not all because of alcohol, but you know, I've come from not a 2.4 family. Um, so yeah so probably just digressed a bit there it's because it's quite a um my upbringing hasn't been the normalist and it's probably normal to the people around around us because that's just life and we get on with it we don't sit there and just wallow in our sorrows of what our lives could have been um but equally i think you know i wasn't brought up with a silver spoon or what that's saying um but my parents gave me everything so this is no way i want to my both my parents passed away they were the most amazing people that anybody could ever wish for um so i just want to put that out there and, and the, my drinking was nothing to do with them but the surrounding environment probably was um so like i said the age of 13 started drinking around my school friends we all drank but they didn't drink like me and they probably look back and probably think that was one of the most horriblest girls in the school. And to think that that people would think that of me now is disgusting. I know you can't change your past. And I get actually quite emotional thinking of the things that, like, you know, when I've had fights with people or they probably, you know, like, because I've been drunk. Um, I know I'm only a teenager at the time, but... Um, it's disgusting. Um, so that's where the, the, the problem started. Um, I was then age 15 and um, I had another fight actually um, when I was drunk and I actually got arrested. Um, it got took to court, nothing happened uh, again. So um, that was another problem. And then obviously with the area that you're brought up in, you know, um, um, you do tend to have a few fights. Um, just, I know that's not normal to some people, but my, uh, you know, and people listening to this might think, oh God, why? Um, people that know me now probably couldn't even re remotely relate to the person I'm describing. And my God, I'm glad that you can. I also feel quite, um, the feelings I've got inside me right now, I feel a bit sick knowing that I'm putting all this on a table so people that know me now know that I, what I was like. But that's part of this, isn't it? It's being tr truthful and honest. You know, um, never be ashamed of who you are or where you've come from. Um, it molds you to the person you are today. And I know, um, you know, even when I'm describing that person, that, that person who I despised, like when I was drunk, starting from a young age, um, I know when I wasn't drinking, I am me now. I'm, I, I love who I am. Um, I know that I'm kind, I'm caring, and I put everybody before myself, which is probably a bit of a flaw as well. Um, so I, you know, I, I just want to get on here and just, you know, that's just a snippet of some of the things I did before I even reached the age of 16. Um, and it's, it's been, 
it's been an absolute roller coaster of a journey to get to the age of 37 and then give up drinking. The amount of pain that's happened in my life, um, it, it's mental. Um, sorry, just had to pause for a moment because, um, you know, I'm sharing stories memories that have happened and i'm sharing them to, to the for everyone it's like people can see inside my brain when i'm talking and sometimes i don't mind and sometimes it it's hard for me to even talk about it. now you're probably thinking you've only just shared a few little little snippets but then in my head the way it works i'm recoiling everything 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 that you've done which has been related to alcohol. I've got a scar on my face um, where I had a fight. Um, you know, I, that didn't stop me drinking. You know, I ended up having a little scrap outside the pub and got bottled in the process. Didn't even care. I got up, didn't care. I was like, woo, you know. Well, I probably wasn't doing that exact move. And then somebody said, uh, have you checked your face? I'm like, no. Oh, it's a bit of blood, don't worry. Like, who does that anyway? Who does that? Who thinks it's a bit of blood? Until they went, no, you need to go to and check it in the mirror. And I had a fucking gaping gash down my face. Um, did that stop me drinking? No. No, it didn't. Why? Why didn't it? Like, why on earth have these huge, huge things happen to my in my life? And it's taken me to the age of 37 to do it, to stop drinking. Probably because um, I had a lot of stuff going on as well, maybe. I don't know. I don't really know. And I, I like, why? Why? What? It's also learnt behaviour as well. I think it's learnt behaviour. So if you're, the people that you're surrounding yourself with are doing exactly the same things and they're not calling you up and saying your behaviour is disgusting or look at, look at, look what you're doing, then, um, you're not going to stop. You're not going to stop, are you? Because it's acceptable. It's acceptable to the people around you. They, you know, you're not getting called out on your behaviour. Um, my parents did, but you, I probably ignored them um, because I was like, oh, you don't know anything. You're, you're older because they were. They were grandparents' age. You're older. What do you know? My family are rowdy. You know. Um, and by the way, I just want to say I love my family, and I'm not saying putting them down in any way, shape, or form because that is not, that's part of me. I'm, I'm, I'm still a bit of a psychopath myself, you know, I'm, woo, crazy, um, not violent in any way, shape or form, um, any way, shape or form. And I, you know, and, and I'm glad I'm not, you know, um, obviously I can still hold my own. And if anybody, you know, I don't get put into situations where I need to get, hold my own either. Um, and I would use my skills and common sense to take myself away from situations like that. Whereas I couldn't do that before. And with alcohol, I had no control over my behaviour. And the first thing would be fight. 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 How dare you speak to me like that? And um, when you don't have control of your behaviour and you've got a tendency to be Jekyll and Hyde, that's bad news for anyone around you. Not saying like I'm like a bloody psychopath, people need to be scared of me. That is not what I mean. And I hate people who act like that. That's disgusting. What I mean is it, it's just dangerous for you as a person to not have control over your behaviour. Um, you know, there's been times that I've, you know, woke up and I've got no mobile phone what's happened to you i couldn't i can tell you i remember one time and this is probably this isn't even bad but um i'd gone out on a night out and i lived in town and i'd woke up in my flat and i've got cups with me they're not mine they're not mine I don't know where they are my door's wide open i don't remember getting home like anything could have happened to me i could have had a party i wouldn't have known like where is that normal like I'm surprised I am, I'm alive. I'm just going to put it out there. Anything could have happened to me. I could have been murdered. Um, you know, um, anything. I, I mean, bad stuff has happened. And again, that's, you know, the worst things that happened, which I will go on to talk about. Um, you know, that didn't stop me. That didn't stop me. Um, I do think the biggest change that happened um, 
obviously people that know me, I don't have biologically my own um, family. Um, just something that's just not happened. But I have an amazing, beautiful stepdaughter who's been in my life for seven years now. Um, so that was the first change with my relationship with alcohol when I come in, when I met my new partner at that time um, because he had a daughter who he doesn't drink by the way and he wouldn't he doesn't like drinking in front of his child either so I had to accept that so that sort of um, started the this started the journey of reducing my alcohol intake not no didn't stop my craziness. But it, in some respects, sometimes it made it worse. As in, right, okay, my behaviour has changed because now I've got a young child around me. And although she's not biologically mine, I love her like she is my own. And I then had to um, be aware of what, what if I'm out getting crazy in on my nights out, I wouldn't want her to hear or see stuff if that makes sense. All you parents out there are probably aware of what I mean. Well, I, most, I hope so anyway. Um, so that was the start. Um, so um, every other weekend I wouldn't drink, which was good. But those weekends I wasn't with my stepdaughter, I'd get absolutely rat ass. And I'd wake up and I would drink probably more than I've ever done because I'm like, oh, okay, guys, let's get on it. Right, this is going to be the last time I can have a drink for like two weeks. Again, the mentality of that, like, like, if somebody asked me to go on a night out, I'd be like, well, we'll have, we'll have pre-drinks first, yeah? Like, I couldn't even imagine going out or doing anything if it wasn't, if if it didn't involve alcohol. So anyway, um, that was the start. Um, then, um, obviously, I was trying for a baby, so I would um, stop drinking. And then, um, then I'd have a blowout and get drunk again playing all sorts of games with my own head, basically. I was just, you know, drinking, non-drinking, drinking, non-drinking. Um, um, went out with friends, ended up like getting that drunk that I actually um, cut my ass cheek open to the point it was infected. And I didn't care, I just sat there just talking like, oh yeah, it's fine, no pain, no fear. Um, and that was the month before, I think, the month before I decided to give it drinking because I was like, oh my God, this is embarrassing. Like, my stepdaughter can see that I've got a cut on my ass and I've got no explanation of it. And I didn't want to, like, obviously I didn't tell her I was absolutely drunk. But um, that was when I was like, shit, shit, changes need to happen. And this is, my partner was like, you, the fact that you've not even gone at the hospital when that is a really bad slit in your, like, bum cheek is absolutely shocking. Like, where did you, you just carried on drinking? And I was like, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Um, and I think he, he um, called me out on my behaviours. At first I was like, just because you don't drink, you know, you think you you always push back and just go, well, you don't drink, that's why you're like that. Um, don't try and change me. Like, I am who I am, you don't like me, you know. All that arrogant, shitty behaviour because really you've got a problem with alcohol and you're an absolute ass on it. And if somebody calls you out on it, you get defensive because you don't want to admit you're an absolute twat when you're drinking. Um, so me and my partner battled that for a bit. Um, by the way, I just want to say again, not every time, not every time I drank was I an absolute twat. I'm absolutely lovely as well on drink. I'm me, but hypo, you know, which I think is lovely. Um, but again, um, it took me until I was probably 35, 36 to realise that my um, um, Jekyll and Hyde and the chaotic and horrible drinking side of me come out with my um, a week before my period. Um it feels quite shocking to realise that it took me that long to realise that most of my um, Jekyll and Hyde um, experiences were due to my periods and the um, hormones before. I'm like, why was I so oblivious to it? Like, why didn't I realise this years ago? 
but you can't live in your past and this is what you do with it now and anybody can change their life at any given moment it doesn't matter if you're 70 you know you can change you can do what you want the life world is your oyster um it's if you sit there and wallow and and poor me then you're never going to change um and you need to come to these decisions by yourself don't let anybody tell you you must do anything don't let anybody tell you you must give up drinking it won't work you've got to do it for yourself i've given up drinking so many times and failed miserably and that's because my partner asked me sorry if you're watching but it's true he knows that he knows that i had to make this decision by myself don't get me wrong he was a, f a huge factor why if i didn't have him in my life and um i was probably single uh i probably may not have done this like because you go a bit wild don't you when you're single i might not have come to this decision and maybe i would still be drinking who knows um i know now that i'm strong enough and, and this is my life now and it wouldn't matter what 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 i was doing in my life who i was with i'm strong enough and aware enough and independent enough and have my own self-worth to know what's right for me um so i'm on, on a massive journey at the moment and i love it i love it like i'm just i just want happiness in my life and i'm not thick i'm fully aware that life throws fucking excuse me boulders at you sometimes not just little things massive things and i've you know that's part of life and some people go life with throughout life with just little things happening to them they haven't even experienced any trauma or drama in their lives and fair play to you fair play um but yeah sorry i'm not really sure what this this video was about um it was really just to jump on because i haven't been feeling um myself of late um and you know sometimes you sit there in your own thoughts and talk and think about things and i think it's really important to bring it back to the basics of this channel and some of the stories that I have for you are probably you're going to think what a horrible person I was I was I'm not that person now and if you don't like me don't watch me simple I'll, you know don't care this is about me um so yeah um remember guys anyone who's watching this if no one's watching this Again, don't care um you are the most important person you okay remember that if you are not doing what you want in life that suits you and you'll put somebody else and you're filling yourself around toxic people the people you're surrounding you yourself with are toxic or they're bringing you those bad vibes move away move away from them honestly it's the best move that you can make you need to get away and start fresh that's the only advice i think it's when you break away from the people that enable you to act in that way is the first move um and you've got to want to change you deserve to change you deserve better in life and that's what i keep telling myself anyway i'm not really sure what this one's about but sending lots of love positive vibes and all that by the way i'm at work on my lunch break and um we have a little chill bill room um, and I thought I'd just come in here and um, so you can see like some butterflies and stuff. It's like a well-being room. I love it. Anyway, take care. Bye.